Hi everyone, it is uh, December 29, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber who left this link underneath a video of mine, Ask a Patient. And having gone through it and looked at the medications that I was on that turned my life into a nightmare, I can say that what people are writing is quite true. And unfortunately, there is no standard adverse effect that everybody experiences. And that is a problem only because there are some people who don't experience adverse effects or they're not attributing it to the medications that they're on. And they think because they're not experiencing any adverse effects and it's working beautifully for them or the symptoms that they have, they don't attribute it to the medication, then, well, that, that really uh, dangerous kind of thinking, which is narcissistic, my experience is everybody's experience. Those are the people who, when they hear from other people having experienced adverse effects of the same medication, they'll shoot them down, they'll think that they're, you know, uh, that they're making it up or whatever judgment they have. Truly what is really unfortunate is that so many, so many are experiencing adverse effects. Now, the medications um, are all types of medications. Medications for diabetes, digestive disorders, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, bipolar, antipsychotics, uh, anxiety, anxiety, uh, allergies, and here, Effexor has 2,167 ratings. So you can put in the search bar the medication that you're searching or uh, if the medication is in this list, frequently rated drugs, you can click it on. So, I believe that it was Effexor that ended my career as an attorney and left me with a stroke and left me with a brain that has never come back to what it was. And to those who have asked if I could find the videos that I posted on Kafka Winston World of my experience on these medications and uh, effects are in particular, I can't find them. They might be in storage. I don't know where they are. And my storage is gone. So um, I don't know exactly what's going on with me, but I'm not quite myself in terms of posting videos. It seems very often either it's a motivation problem or I just can't seem to get the words out. I don't know, but I will continue to try. Um, effects are very, very, very dangerous drug that has destroyed people's lives. Now, the only problem that a lot of people have in determining what was the medication that left you permanently disabled or uh, with a stroke or whatever is that many people are on not just one medication but multiple medications and the I don't I don't think that they have ever done the studies on the adverse effects of taking multiple medications. They did not when I learned that the worst thing I have ever, ever done, the worst, absolutely the worst decision I ever made was to step into a psychiatrist's office. And no, I'm not mentally ill. Uh, if I ever get around to posting a video on what took place, then you'll understand. But, um, 
you know, I expected, <laughs> I expected to just be on medication to get me through my third year of law school. And it became seven years and five medications and two more psychiatric disorder diagnoses, ADHD. I have never been ADHD. Bipolar, never had I ever been bipolar. In fact, I used to joke, I wish I was a little bipolar. That way I could experience joy. It was a joke, but not a joke to those who are bipolar. Um, I lost control of my life very soon after stepping into a psychiatrist's office and I didn't realize it. So uh, taking a look at this site and what do we have? Key ratings. Okay. One is I would not recommend taking this medicine. Five, this medicine cured me or helped me a great deal. These medications do not cure anybody. So, um, and you do have a range of uh, ratings. So here, too, weight gain, apathy, brain zaps. The side effects that people have experienced, they put in this column. Uh, the reason for, which is very interesting, because you see how many medications are being prescribed off-label. Um, it's, God, we are so screwed up with these medications. But comments then, and I will tell you, it was not this site, but I found a site, and this was back in 2002, when, yeah, my life was destroyed. I found a site that was similar to this, people writing in their experiences, being on all sorts of medications. I was horrified. I was so shocked. I remember sitting at my computer for months doing all of this research on these medications that literally destroyed my career, my health, my life. That's not dramatic. People's lives are being destroyed. And my sobriety that I absolutely loved. And I came across people who were writing. My sobriety destroyed. Came across a comment from somebody and the similarities in our details. He had 15 years of sobriety. He got on medication. I think it was Prozac and something else. And he lost his sobriety. He was a very wealthy, uh, successful dentist in Florida. And he had been purchasing real estate. And he was married with two children. He had 15 years of sobriety. Got on Prozac a couple of months later. He was drinking, drinking in a way that he had never drank before. And when I kept seeing people, those people who had lost their sobriety and were drinking in a completely different way than how they used to drink, that's exactly what happened to me. And yes, there is a study that I found that came out of Yale, cannot find it, cannot find it on the internet anymore. But... Yale Research, S uh, the name of the study was SSRI Induced Alcoholism, and in that study they were stating that these medications are making people lose their sobriety and drink a tremendous amount because the medication, many medications act like cocaine. Now if you ever did cocaine, you will know that you don't get drunk. It kind of does something in your brain where it's very, you've got to drink a tremendous amount if you're doing cocaine to get drunk. It kind of keeps you, you sober. The really dangerous thing is that you end up drinking an awful lot. Well, I was reading that from people who were taking psychiatric medications and it was heartbreaking. You know, one of the greatest thing I loved about sobriety, having long-term sobriety, was 
I was present in the world, very present in the world. Step into a psychiatrist's office, I lost it. But it was so subtle with me that I couldn't see how I was going down. And that also, it's called spellbinding, or that's what um, psychiatrist uh, Peter Bregan calls it, spellbinding. He said, you know, it's like the alcoholic who's ruining the party. They can't, they, they think they're the life of the party. Everybody else around them just wants to get away from them. That's what happens on these medications. You can't see. You, it's like you lose touch with your own reality. It's warped. You think you're fine as you're losing more and more control over your life. They're very dangerous. So um, I will link below to this site. Any of you who are thinking about getting on medication, regardless of what it is, but especially psychiatric medications because they are turning people into something that they never would have been had they not gotten on these medications. I don't want to say that those who experience the immediate dramatic adverse effects, I'm sure many of you have heard and seen you know, congressional hearings with people coming up and saying uh, what their what happened to them after Prozac you know that was considered the miracle cure and and they were talking about immediately you know uh, self injuring picking up a gun, doing things, acting in a way so violent, either against themselves or other people. You know, when you have the dramatic immediate effects, you can point the finger at, okay, I just started this medication and this is how I'm acting. And you have people around you who can say, get off it. It's the medication that's doing this to you when you have the subtle effects those are far more dangerous because you're not recognizing them and those in your life don't really recognize oh well they think you're just having a hard time or whatever um, they're not saying anything and a lot of people do not understand that these medications are the result of an awful lot of people who are behaving in ways that is uh, causing a lot of damage in relationships, behaving in ways that are immoral, uh, those who are sexually acting out, um, they leave you with an apathy even about your own sense uh, or your own self. They leave you with your priorities really screwed up. So there are people who have experienced um, good results. Very often a lot of people will experience the good results when they first take the medication for the first maybe couple of weeks or a month. And then suddenly, well, it's that chronic use of these medications. Your brain begins to adapt to the medication. Your neurotransmitters are being triggered, set off by these medications. The longer you stay on these medications, try to get off it. The withdrawal is nothing I have ever experienced in my entire life. 
And unfortunately, a lot of the adverse effects are permanent. Permanent. So here's somebody with a five, OCD, anxiety, depression. Definitely hurt sex drive. First few days makes my concentration weird and fuzzy. Can cause some nausea. Tends to make me extremely tired and sleepy. But I can say with 100% certainty that affects her has saved my life more than once. Okay, that's that person's experience and it's not everybody's experience. So like vaccines playing Russian roulette, you're playing Russian roulette with these medications. One, um, the, the brain zaps that a lot of people talk about, what happened to my brain because I was not given informed consent and not no one told me to stop don't stop abruptly and I ran out of the effects there and I decided to just wait until I had an appointment to get it within 36 hours I have never been so sick in my entire life the nausea was so intense I could not walk I crawled I had to hold on to the wall. The dizziness was so intense. But what was happening to my brain? Um, well, <laughs> it seemed to every movement of my eyes. You cannot keep your eyes completely still. You may be focused on something with your eyes, but they're still moving just so ever slightly. And you move them, you look at something else. Okay, it did not stop. It would not stop even with my eyes closed. There was, it, it felt like something was going through my brain, like a current, like a wave. And it would with a noise in my brain. It sounded like whoosh and this wave that went from one side of my skull to another when it got to the other side it slammed up against my skull and then it went right on back that whoosh whoosh it, it didn't stop So a friend came over, saw me in that condition, uh, called the psychiatrist that was on call, and um, she went to get my file. She looked at it. She's, she, told, she called my friend immediately back, said, get down to CVS immediately. I have called in the prescription. It's there. It's available right now. Do not stop. Get back and give her the medication. That's what my friend did. I took the medication within two hours. Every symptom I was experiencing was gone. Like someone flipped a switch. I'm, I'm just, you know, talking about the most dramatic side effects. But after that experience, my brain was no longer the same. I, the dizziness continued, not as intense, but the nausea, I learned that people getting off of Fexer, they were being prescribed medication for cancer patients undergoing chemo, the nausea that they feel, the medication to help them with that nausea, the same medication was being prescribed to people trying to get off of Fexer. And a lot of people talk about the brain zaps, uh, like an electrical current going through your brain. Not good, not good at all. But I do believe that that's when my stroke occurred. Though I was having an awful lot of symptoms prior to that, but nothing as explosive. And I never got myself back. You know, it's amazing when you 
speak this experience, and I have spoken it often with to parents, my friends, who had children, and they were thinking of putting them on these medications, or if they were on these medications, not one parent cared. I'm not kidding. Not one parent cared. And that was a long time ago, before we were so saturated in all of these poisons and the frequencies and everything. So, something's wrong here with our parenting. But, um, you'll see, you know, there's a range of symptoms, increased urination. Uh, a friend of mine was on Effexor, and he could not urinate. And he had extreme pain. His penis, the pain, was so intense. He would take warm baths. He would try something. I tried. I, I, I told him, you've got to get off this Effexor. So he said he would, he would. He went to his doctor, and his doctor told him that it wasn't from the Effexor, and that's it. He's staying on it. Okie dokie. Um, lack of coordination. Yep, experience that. Joint pains, tiredness, um, headaches. Eye aches. My eyes never seem to focus. Weight gain, brain zaps, decreased libido, weight gain, apathy, brain zaps. All right, you got to check this site out. I will tell you, when I came across that site, when I was trying to get off these medications, when I, it was when, two hours later, after taking that medication, that suddenly I was, the nausea was gone, the dizziness was gone, the brain zaps, whatever the hell was going on in my brain, it was gone. I got up immediately and I spent months, months doing research. Everything I was told about these medications was untrue. Untrue. I was lied to. The side effects that I would report, I was told they were not side effects. Oh, it's you. You're having late onset bipolar 2. Never knew there was a bipolar 2. Um, but nothing about me was ADHD. Nothing about me was bipolar 2. And I, yeah, spent years in shell shock wondering how the hell could I have lived seven years with somebody else telling me what I was about, who I was, because I was never that person. And suddenly, I became that person on the medications. These medications are causing the explosion in, quote-unquote, mental illness. illness. And, um, yeah, they are destroying people's lives. So, take it seriously. If you're on it, if you're thinking about going on it, if you've got your children on these medications, you need to read about people's experiences. And do not stop any of it abruptly. Do the research to find out. You know, you'd be very lucky if you found a psychiatrist or a medical doctor that would help you get off them. Most try to get off them. Suddenly they're experiencing, you know, these withdrawal effects. They go to see their psychiatrist or medical doctor, and they're told that, well, you're, you're, the symptoms of your mental illness is coming back. No, you're going through extreme withdrawal. Many people have been unable, unable, due to the damage in their brain from the medications, unable to get off them and they're stuck on them because their brain no longer operates organically, naturally, normally. And getting that brain back to normal is extremely difficult. It's like you take a drug away. Oh, hi there. I gotta go feed a cat. Um, hi, sweetie. All right, one second, one second. Anyway, um, yeah, it's like withdrawal from cocaine or heroin or anything. Your brain, it takes an awful long time to go back to its natural way of um, operating. 
without the drugs. The longer you stay on it, your brain becomes it, it's your brain is working from the medications. The medications are operating your brain. You take those medications away, voila, you're left with an awful lot of experiences that not too many people um, know about. Okay. All right, sweetie. Why are cats meowing so bizarrely lately? Anyway, the link is below.